Hello everybody, we're back at the RV. Uh, Sue is sweeping. Wow, this looks like such a mess in here. <laughs> it really does. It's because it's been raining and we pulled everything that we normally store under the RV inside. So it looks like a mess in here, uh, but we're getting but we're getting projects done finally, which is nice. We took some time off to go do things with family and all that stuff. But now that uh, everything's locking down again, it's a perfect time to get back into uh, fixing stuff up. So we've had a, a list of projects and there's one that I have ke I, I've kept putting off for whatever reason, um, mainly because it's not an is, essential. Is it, is it all of them? All of them I've been putting off. <laughs> but this one, this one's particularly, I've been putting off over and over again. I have it all planned, um, but maybe because it's not necessarily an essential thing for us to just take this thing out and go camping with. Um, but in our apartment, we had these things. They're Unify uh, AC Pro access points. Um, we, I bought some back when I was still working in IT and I really like them. They've got uh, really good throughput, really good signal strength, and they're a mesh wireless, so I can connect multiple pull together to a, cert to a central controller, and your device doesn't realize when it, it just bumps them from one to the other, depending on which one has the best signal. And as far as your device concerns, it's still on the same network. It doesn't have, you don't have to manually switch. And they were really nice when we had a three and two house. They were way overkill when we were in our tiny apartment. And they're going to be even more overkill now that we're in our RV, but I already have them. So I wanted to install them so that we have constant Wi-Fi in here to connect all our devices together. One thing I will not do is we are, I'm not at the moment installing a persistent internet connection, like a cellular connection that will, or satellite that'll grab internet and then rebroadcast it. This is just going to be a local Wi-Fi network. So the hope is we have a file server, so we're going to, plug our file server in, be able to get beyond any of our devices and be able to wirelessly connect to it and at least do stuff locally. And then when we're somewhere that has uh, an internet connection that we can grab, I bought one of these. This is a, uh, it's a Unify Nanostation M2. It's the 2.4 gigahertz version because that's the more common frequency. They also make a 5.8, but 2.4 is more common. And what this is, uh, it's a point to point, so normally you'd set two of these up and they'd broadcast, uh, they'd basically bridge your network. So if you had two houses next door to each other, you'd put two of these up, one on one house, one on the other. And it would link your networks together so that it's as if you have a gigabit ethernet line, but it's over Wi-Fi. But what it also does that you can make it do is uh, it will pick up an access point way off in the distance. And it's a super high gain antenna and a really high broadcast power. So it's basically, I'm gonna use it as a long range Wi-Fi antenna. Put it up on the steps in the back, on the ladder that goes up to the roof, and then bring the Wi-Fi in, rebroadcast it with these Wi-Fi things so that we have Wi-Fi in, inside. So we have uh, internet service. We'll always have Wi-Fi, but it'll bring outside internet in. So that's the plan. And so far, Sue's looking at me weird. So far I've run ethernet cable, so now I gotta get it all hooked up. place to put this <laughs> I need where are our garbage bags I will go get one thank you I'm gonna go get a garbage bag you can come with me these are the things we're doing it's all super glamorous and exciting <laughs> Thank you. Um, I am sweeping up all of my mess. I'm making progress in here. Cool. I'm working on the shower and hopefully soon we'll be able to give you guys a comprehensive, this is what we did to make our shower video. She's been working on this for the past several days and we don't want to make a video and have it end with us not finished with the project. We want to do it from the start to the beginning or from the beginning to the end. So, uh, that's what we're trying to do. That's why this has been going on for a while and we haven't made a video yet. It will be, hopefully next week, we'll be done with it. 
Guys, when you're doing caulking, just be aware <laughs> that removing this takes hours and hours of scrubbing and scraping with a razor blade and multiple products and lots of elbow grease. <laughs> so if you decide to go caulking something willy-nilly, don't do it. So I'm, I'm reaping what I sowed. <laughs> She went crazy with the caulking gun because it was frustrating and we were leaving as she was caulking. So, so it got everywhere. So I was, I was rushed and I was rushed. But here I'll give you a preview of what it looks like in here. This is mainly what she's been working on. There's our shower floor. It's a penny tile with white grout and we have two drains. This one it goes to the gray, normal gray holding tank. This one goes to the recirculating uh, system. Right now you can see that the recirculating system is plugged because we don't want to get dirt down into the recirculating tank because that would be a pain in the butt. Uh, so it's set up for taking a normal shower. But we'll go into detail and all that stuff once it's finally done. It's been used and tested. It's just we haven't called it done yet because we're still kind of in progress. So. Oh, and you still need to explain to them how you did the whole recirculating shower thing. Like I know yes. we did a video on building it, but we never really explained what it was. Yes. So we will have, once the shower is done, we want to go into detail about how we did the, the pan and the walls, which that's part, that's a big part of it. But then also how all the recirculating stuff has been working, which I still have to fix some stuff with the programming. So that's one thing I wanted to fit it, figure out before I make that video, because I want to post the code so you could use it with the Arduino. And two, I also wanted to be able to show it running, which it can't right now because the shower isn't done. So soon, both of those will be done. <laughs> My bad! I didn't want to deal with the shower, so she got it and she's been doing it all. So, so right now I'm going to work on the Wi-Fi stuff because hopefully I can finish that today. Alright, I'm going to go scrape more silicone! Woohoo! Yay! So when we pulled this thing apart, one of the things I did before we put it back together is run two ethernet lines through the length of the RV because I knew I would want uh, Wi-Fi. So one of the cables runs outside. It runs, where did I put it? Oh, it runs down here into the cabinet, around, it's zip tied to the chassis, runs to the back of the RV, goes up some of the siding, and then comes out at the roof at the top of the ladder for that Wi-Fi extender, because I had planned to do that. And then the other one runs the entire length of the RV from here in the front, right here, to the back, in the back, because I knew uh, we had two of the Unify AC things, which I might remove it at some point, because it may, it's they're only 30 feet apart, and having Wi-Fi really close together can cause interference. So we'll see if it's a benefit or a well, we'll see. I'm just, I've got it, so I'm putting it in. So we have a second AC access point in the bedroom, and then I have a switch in there, and so this ethernet cable goes into there, connects to the Wi-Fi access point, and then I'm gonna put our printer back there, because we have so much power, we can run a laser printer. So it'd be nice to just have a wireless laser printer while we're out on the road to, just for whatever. We've got it, it's a small one, so I figure let's put it in here. So I didn't label which cables which. One goes to the ladder, one goes to the access point. But one of these right now is connected to a switch in the back that is powered. So I think what I'm gonna do is terminate the end on one of these cables. I'll leave it at its full length just because I can. And I'll plug it into a device and see if it connects. If it doesn't, it's probably the one on the ladder. If it does, then it's definitely connected to the switch in the back. So that's how I'm gonna figure it out. At least that's the theory. So I'm gonna terminate the end of this and I'm wiring them as 568B. And if you want, you can look it up online how that's wired. Basically, I always forget to do this part. I put these cable strain relievers on and it's a pain in the butt once you strip the wire. But when it's still together like that, that's when I put them on. So, You'll see these ethernet lines, they're four pairs of wires, color-coded. 
There's an orange, a green, a blue, and a brown. And each pair has a solid color and a stripe color. So orange and orange stripe, green and green stripe, blue and blue stripe, brown and brown stripe. And 568B uh, goes in orange, then green, green stripe, then blue, blue stripe, then green, brown stripe, brown. And uh, the A standard is green stripe, green, orange stripe, blue, blue stripe, orange, brown stripe, brown from pin one over because there's eight wires in four pairs. So I'm going to do it as B because that's what everything in here is and it's a little more standard. And uh, I'm going to crimp it. I used to do everything in uh, A standard which starts out with green but then uh, anytime I cut a pre-made cable there are it seems like most of the time they're made as blue or as uh, as B standard. So I started doing B standard. Uh, I don't know if it matters much. I know that there's, if you look, the blue has a certain number of twists in it. The brown has more twists. Same thing with green and orange. So I know there is something to do with that with the way the data travels. I don't know. I haven't looked into it. So I don't have an answer for you. It's just the way I've been doing it. I do know if you do B standard on one end of your cable, do it on the other. So if you're wiring a house, do them all the same. If you choose one or the other. I can't tell you which one's better or not, because I don't know why. I probably should, but I probably looked it up once, but I don't remember. So my first task is to unwrap all the wired pairs. Solid green, green stripe, orange stripe, solid orange, blue, blue stripe, brown stripe, brown. And I want to get my connector as close to where they're still twisted pairs so that they're not untwisted too long. Like if I put my connector way up here and all of these straight cables, it would uh, have a problem with, or it could interfere with the signal. I do know that much. I always do uh, pin one is on my left because I'm going to put the cable, I'm going to put the connector. The connector looks like this. So pin one is this pin and then they go across that way. So pin one is gonna be my starting one. So it's gonna be the orange stripe. Orange stripe, orange, green stripe, solid blue, blue stripe, green, brown stripe, brown. So I've got them all lined up and I'm pinching them down and then just kind of wiggle them, get them all straight. So there are all my cables. And then I trim a little bit off. And it always makes a mess. So I've got them trimmed down. They're not too short yet because I still have to get the connector together. And these connectors, this is category six. So the cable is a little bit thicker and on a standard RJ45 jack, um, on Cat 5E, they could all sit like all the wires could be right next to each other, but these wires are a little bit thicker, so they kind of have to stagger and offset. So I have one of these little things. So this slips on like a so. This little sleeve. And I want to get as close as possible. And then uh, trim it off as close as I can get. There we go. So now I'm left with this connector. You can see the wires are staggered. And uh, so now I take this, uh, make sure that pin one is orange stripe. This slides in. Now we have a uh, ethernet cable terminated. And now I can test it. Okay, switch is powered up. Plug this in. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go double check that if I unplug this, that this does in fact go out. But um, I've got a link and I've got gigabit, so my two switches are connected. So this is the connection to the back of the RV. This right here is the old uh, media cabinet. So that's where like, when this thing was sold, probably VCR and DVD player were, and maybe satellite receiver. But uh, we're not going to have any of that stuff. So I'm going to install the, all of the networking gear up here. The switch, the router, and probably the Wi-Fi access point. And then 
I think our server is gonna go up in here. How's it going? Good. This is the aftermath of making all those cables. Whoa. Access point in the front is mounted. Gateway, switch, power over ethernet injector for this, that thing over there on the other side of the wall. And another power over ethernet injector that goes outside that will go to this thing. So I'm gonna mount this thing up there. And I probably won't keep the camera out here because I don't want to go up on the roof and be able to see into people's backyards. We're trying to be good neighbors with people and not film uh, from the roof. So I will go do that and then uh, show you how it works. All right, it's up there. This is uh, how it looks right now. I think at some point I want to get a little mast that'll go up above that top of the ladder so I can spin it 360 degrees because I can't point it towards the front right now. But uh, at least it's hooked up and it'll work. So I think I have everything installed and working-ish. I still need to configure the long range antenna outside. Uh, and I don't really have a good connection internet signal to lock onto out here but I have installed everything. So we've got two gigabit ethernet switches, one in the bedroom, one in the front, two AC access points that are mesh wireless, one in the front, one in the back, uh, a 2.4 gigahertz AC long range Wi-Fi antenna, the nano station, all the power over ethernet adapters are installed, everything's plugged in, everything is powered, we have our gateway installed. So now I just need the server and I can plug that in and uh, you should be all set with Wi-Fi. And it's nice because it didn't take up nearly as much room as I thought up here in this front cabinet. Everything is hung on the wall. It's just kind of tucked out of the way. And then this is our cell phone booster. I gotta figure out what to do with that. Here's the access point. Everything's tucked away nice up in there. And then the all the equipment back here is in the closet behind the drawers because we didn't want any light in the bedroom. So it's all back behind all of this. I think that's it for Wi-Fi. It's kind of nice. It's done.